First at four, Southfield police investigate a shooting involving an eight-year-old girl. We're told a member of her family is in custody right now. We have the very latest. It's the presidential phone call everyone is talking about. The Secretary of State's office in Georgia just shot down claims President Trump made during that call. Ben. Karen, clouds keeping us dry today, but the flakes are back tomorrow, and we'll look at how much longer we'll have to wait to see some more. And wild coyotes hitting Boulder. A resident in one community says they just walk around like they own the place. We'll talk about that neighborhood's concerns first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, a shooting leaves an 8-year-old in the hospital and the child's brother in police custody. This happened Sunday night at an apartment on 12 Mile between Cass and Franklin Road in Southfield. We're told the girl is in critical condition after being shot in the head. Police say the child's 20-year-old brother is in custody. Neighbors describe the scene moments after the child was shot. So he ran into the elevator, and right when the door was closed, two cops came in. Where did you go? I just said upstairs. I don't know where exactly he went. They went upstairs, and uh, and then the mother came down with an officer, and she was pretty, uh, pretty messed up about it. The case is expected to be presented to the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office for possible charges. The new Washtenaw County prosecutor is making a big change when it comes to bond for criminal suspects. Eli Savitz says his office will no longer seek cash bail in any case. In a statement, the prosecutor says under a cash system, poorer people, even those accused of relatively minor crimes, are forced to sit in jail for days, weeks, or even years. Instead, prosecutors will now make decisions on a case-by-case -case basis on the best ways to ensure public safety. New at 5, the defenders dig into how that new system will work and will also get reaction to the change. Over in Macomb County, the Macomb County has also has a new prosecutor, former state senator Peter Lacido, took his oath of office bright and early this morning in Mount Clemens. He takes over for disgraced prosecutor Eric Smith, who resigned from the post after being charged in connection with corruption and embezzlement. Lucido hopes healing the wounds caused by months of scandal within the prosecutor's office. It's a new year, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new beginning for the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office. Make no mistake about it. We represent all people of every walk of life, of every nature, and we want to ensure that they are served in the highest regards of trust. That's all I'm asking. Do your best. The 58 assistant prosecutors that will work under Lucido also took their oath of office this morning. Shareholders of Fiat, Chrysler, and Peugeot are stepping on the gas when it comes to merging their two companies. The shareholders at both companies approved that merger today, creating the fourth largest auto company in the world. It combines three legacy car companies that help shape the industrial histories of America, France, and Italy. The new car company will be able to produce nearly 9 million cars a year behind Volkswagen, Toyota, and Renault-Nissan. The new company will be called Stellantis. Ben Bailey working on the first forecast for you from his home office today. And this evening looks pretty quiet, but things get a little interesting overnight, Ben. Yeah, Karen, uh, even after we had a pretty slow start to the snowfall season, we're rapidly seeing those chances increase just after the weekend burst. Now we've got more flakes that are just around the corner, but not today. You can see a couple of them uh, left over from what we saw over the weekend. As you take a look out over Ann Arbor, current temperatures are in the 30s out there, right around that freezing mark. Not much of a wind, but when it's this cold, doesn't take much to put those wind chills into the mid to upper 20s. And we'll stay consistently uh, around that mark uh, through most of the evening hours. Weather impacts are pretty much all tomorrow. It's the snow chances that we're expecting for Tuesday. So we'll talk about how much to expect and what's going to come after that because you can see from the forecast it isn't going to be a lot of sunshine we'll take a look at whether there are warm air and warmer temperatures coming with it all in just a few minutes karen all right thank you ben we did just receive the newest covid numbers from the state of michigan and we have passed another milestone the two-day total of new cases is close to 5,000. those cases were reported over sunday and monday that brings the total number of cases in michigan more than 500,000. Also, another 80 Michiganders have died because of the virus over the past two days. 
on the vaccine front. Some of the first people to receive the Pfizer vaccine have started to receive their second doses today. Right now, two shots are required. Meantime, patients in the UK are receiving the first doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. 82 year old Brian Pinker, a dialysis patient, was the first to get the shot. Health officials say this vaccine is cheaper and easier to use since it does not require the super cold storage needed by the Pfizer vaccine. More than a million doses are available today with tens of millions more to be delivered in the coming weeks. Normally, this would be a quiet week of government transition, a new Congress in place, and we'd be counting down to the presidential inauguration. Of course, the 2020 election has been like no other. Republicans are promising to challenge Joe Biden's victory in the Electoral College on Wednesday. Georgia is holding two runoff elections tomorrow that will decide the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. And outgoing President Trump is under fire for a controversial call to Georgia's Secretary of State looking for ways to overturn the presidential results in that state. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom and Kim, we just heard from the Secretary of State's office over in Georgia. We did. Karen, good afternoon to you. On that phone call, President Trump has heard pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State to, quote, find enough votes to overturn Biden's victory in that state. The president also repeats several claims found to be false about the election's integrity. And just 30 minutes ago, the Secretary of State's office shot down those claims and says Congress will uphold the results. The state of Georgia's electors will get seated. They will look at this evidence as best they can in such a way, and it will be voted on by the House and Senate. We anticipate that, and that will prove our certification was proper at the end of the day. Well, President Trump's renewed intervention and persistent claims come just 16 days before he's scheduled to leave office. The call was made public Sunday. Democrats and a few Republicans are condemning the call. Some are even calling it illegal. Democrats in Congress expect Joe Biden's victory will be upheld in just two days. Joe Biden won the election in clear and convincing fashion. More than 80 million Americans voted for Joe Biden. That's more than any other presidential candidate in American history. Now, our coverage of the president's phone call, the response from Georgia's Secretary of State, and the Electoral College showdown will continue. We're checking with Michigan's congressional delegation to see where they stand on this. We'll have that part of the story coming up on the news when you join us at 5 and 6. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Ken. Sure. Closer to home, many of us know that we are living side by side with coyotes these days, but seeing photos like this kind of still a little jarring. This picture comes from Brighton, where concerns are growing about the coyotes having run-ins with neighborhood pets. Local Forest Kim DiGiulio tells us about this uneasy coexistence of man and nature. I just spoke with the residents in this house behind me here who've lived in this neighborhood for over 20 years, and they say this coyote problem is really something that's ramped up over the last year. While this Brighton neighborhood appears to be safe, its residents are living in fear. I heard the dog barking, so I went and looked, and there was a coyote just the other side of the fence looking at her. And as soon as the cat coyote saw me, it took off running. On a community chat forum, residents have posted videos like this one. While it appears the prey in this video is wildlife, Dennis Howie is now fearful for his three dogs. Online in some of the community groups that I read regularly for the people around here, um, I do hear stories or do see people comment that their pets have gone missing and you hate to think the worst, but it happens. So a lot of the time they come through right here. Alexander Lozano has spotted the coyotes on different occasions. He believes there's more than just two based on the different sizes he's seen. They just pretty much uh, walk through the neighborhood, kind of act like they own the place, but keep on moving right through. Yeah, no, we've had no attacks yet or, or anything. One neighbor has even reached out to the mayor of Brighton, but because of city limits, she was told to reach out to Genoa Township Hall, who has not yet responded. It's definitely slightly concerning. Uh, some of the neighbors in the area definitely have small dogs. Uh, we don't have any pets anymore, but yeah, it's definitely concerning to us. The neighbor who reached out to the mayor also told me that she has been reaching out to the DNR, but hasn't had anything happen yet. We reached out to the DNR today, but did not get a response. In Brighton, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. One neighbor also tells us she personally paid for a coyote catcher to track down the animals, but she says that hasn't helped either. 
Still ahead here, first at four, he's accused of espionage against the United States government. Why a British judge says Julian Assange should not be brought to America. President Trump's big gamble on Iran has not paid off. We're tracking two signs tensions are once again on the rise in the Middle East. Plus, plastic surgery during a pandemic? But some people apparently think now is the perfect time to get some work done. And here's Hank Winchester. Hi, Karen. I've been getting a lot of emails from viewers asking about the stimulus payout. When will they see the money? Well, we have new information from the IRS about when the money is actually making its way to Metro Detroit. I have that and also what you need to do to make sure that you get paid. It's coming up new tonight at 5 o'clock. Melania Trump secretly recorded again. Black hair? 